You want a free corset 2020 preview card? You look like a show host. What a preview card from corset 2020. Sure. What's it going to cost us? Nothing. Like I said, here, uh, take the card. Thanks, mister. Let me see this. <gasps> Whoa, thanks. I can't wait to show the guys. The heat is melting my beard wax. It's hilarious. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, that's right. I have to start wearing beard balm. I'm Phil DeLuca. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Phil <laughs> <laughs> that, that, is, that is not fair, Phil. <laughs> it's great, though. It made you and, laugh, and I love that. And we are Commander. In- <laughs> <laughs> yes, we are. Oh boy, thanks for listening and watching everybody. Uh, We put a spotlight on community issues, but never ever do we talk about three banned topics, do we, Shiva? No, No, sir. Uh, What are they again? (laughs) Religion, politics, and Hearthstone. Yes, indeed. Um, Well, we have a wonderful show lined up for our viewers and listeners. Uh, as we both sweat to death in our respective recording areas. Uh, it looks uh, like summer has finally hit. <laughs> yes. Uh, this episode, uh, in particular the video portion, if we, uh, we might attach an audio portion to this. Who knows, at the end of it. Um, but uh, this episode, we're going to share our uh, Magic Core 2020 preview card. Yep. And uh, this is the core set that's for 2019, of course. Let's not be confused. We are not travelers from the future. Although sometimes we feel that way. You may not be. Uh, Yeah, see? See, everybody? I knew it. It's Shiva. Shiva (laughs) is the time traveler. Um, But it's uh, named for the next year after its release because otherwise it won't sell because Americans are a fickle audience and stores won't carry stuff from last year. Ugh. you want to read the details on this? I might need a drink. Sure. It's so hot in here. Uh, so the pre-release for this set will be on the July 5th through the 7th. And mind you, this is the first time that we're going to be able to have a pre-release on a Friday. And not just a Friday midnight, but like Friday mid-afternoon. It's going to be Ooh. amazing. Yeah, that's great. The set releases on July 12th, which is about two weeks after that. And it has 280 cards in it, uh, which is a core set. So it's a pretty big set. But also, for the first time, they're going to be increasing the number of foils in the set. So before, foils used to be about one every 67 or so cards. But now they're dropping that percentage to about one every 45. Which is almost like a full 30% increase of of foils over the last time. Yeah, that's Give or take. That's like back of the envelope math. But it means that you'll be running into foils a whole lot more, which is really interesting. And a pretty neat um, trick to help uh, sell core sets. That should be pretty cool. (laughs) <laughs> I'm excited to see how that works out. Yeah, let's let's hope. Uh, well, let's genuinely hope they maintain this ratio. Oh, It'd be yeah, cool if neat. every course that they ratchet it down so that we get closer and closer. One, to, one to, to two. One. Yeah, <laughs> and then it's gonna be like you're gonna get the chase non-foil card. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, eventually. And actually, the fat pack bundles come with uh, twenty foil basics as well, which is really actually with something that I'm super interested in. And yeah, apparently really something cool. called an oversized spin down. Now, if you know anything about me, I collect spin down, so I'm super excited to see what that means. But what else is going to be for this pre-release? The London Mulligans have become official, and it's going to be in use, so you probably want to learn what that is before you go to your event. Yep. And this is a Chandra-focused set, so there's going to be three Chandras, including one at Uncommon, one at Rare, and one at Mythic Rare. So I look forward to seeing how all y'all uh, decide to use those in your brand new burn decks. But, Phil, we're here for a preview card this week, which is not a Chandra, is it? <laughs> That's right. It is not a Chandra at all. Um, before we roll into that, though, uh, I'm going to stop squeaking. Sorry, everybody. Uh, I'm actually, a lot of people don't realize this, even, but I'm actually, uh, my joints are made of leather. I'm actually kind of a golem. 
I thought you were going to say you were actually a half plush rabbit on your mother's side. You know, not a lot of people knew that until <laughs> just this moment. <laughs> Filled so... with squeaky dog toy. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And uh, before so... we go down that rabbit hole any further... <laughs> If you would like to support our podcast, please feel free to go to commander at mtg.com forward slash donations. There you can find three different ways to support us, all with direct links. And we genuinely appreciate each and every one of you who helps us stay on the air. Yes, uh, we you do. can also go check out our podcast on YouTube, uh, like and subscribe, because we're starting to do more and more videos of these, and that's super cool. And best of all, please share our podcast with your friends, because oh. that's the best way we grow our community, which is on Discord, by the way, for our patrons in our Patreon chat. And it's fantastic. We have a really great community there. It's very active and full of people who totally want to help you fix up your EDH decks. They've certainly helped well, me with mine, and it's uh, pretty fantastic. Yeah. So uh, it, it, at least, least anybody misunderstand, um, it's not just for our patrons either. It's no. for anybody who has the Discord link. We post that once in a while. Um, they do tend to expire, even if you set them not to expire, which is kind of crazy. So we should probably repost that. But yeah, yes. there's a general channel <laughs> for uh, the entire community, and then various yeah. tiers of our patron channels, and it's fantastic. I'm always really active is. in there, and Phil's always active in there, and it's just yeah. good to sit and talk with you guys on a one-on-one -on -one level. And since everybody's on Discord, so are we. Yep, and uh, so. Of course, our primary sponsors are our patrons, but we do actually have a corporate sponsor, and that is Quiver Time. They make the fantastic Quiver, which, oh, of course, I, I just brought it with me to uh, on a personal trip to Las Vegas, of course. I didn't leave it in Las Vegas. It's on my couch, but that's in a different room. Um, yeah. And, uh, yeah, the Quiver is awesome. Oh, and, it's uh, fantastic. Yeah, we actually took them on as a sponsor. We asked them if, if they would help us sponsor giveaway contests for our listeners and patrons. Because Shivam already owned one, and he posted about it. And and I looked at it, and it was fantastic. And I got my own, and we put cards in it. And I, I put cards and dice and, card, and I was going to say cards again. You can again, fit card about sleeves. five or six EDH decks. You can yeah. fit a play mat in there, dice token sleeves. Everything that we need in an easy-to-carry package that's easy to transport over the airplanes as well. And, as we learned at uh, GPLA, it's also <laughs> waterproof. Because when we were walking in the rain, none of my cards got messed up. Mildly waterproof. <laughs> don't, don't swim with it. But for the most part, if you're quick, it will keep your cards dry. And that's yep. pretty great. I don't know if it would survive an Orlando rain, but, you know, we could Probably try Probably not. We'll have to give Listen, that a try. If anybody goes to the swamp and dunks their quiver in, please let me know how your yeah. decks come out. It definitely let us know if the quiver can be used as a flotation device. We don't advise that. I do but it's not possible. recommend this. Uh, we do not endorse such uses of your storage <laughs> equipment. Yep. And uh, right. So thank you very much, Quiver Time. Uh, we will have details about our next um, uh, contest on Twitter. So anybody who's listening to this on the 20th of June, tune in, follow us on Twitter so that you have a chance to win. Um, we actually uh, announced in the last episode, remember, we traveled in time to the future to discover the winner of our Quiver contest. So uh, whoever that was, because we're still traveling in time, congratulations, and you'll hear uh, a new winner maybe at the beginning of July this time. So uh, now... We have a preview card, right? We do have a preview card. Thank you kindly to the uh, kind folks at Wizards of the Coast for providing this to us free of charge. Free of charge, everybody. This we... is actually a really cool card. When uh, when Phil passed it on to me, I was just like, I, it took me a second to read it and figure out, like, oh, oh, that's real cool. Yeah. So it's It's pretty much only an EDH card, too. Yeah, it feels like, I don't know how you'd use this in standard, but let's talk about it first, and then we can tell you why this is pretty great. <laughs> the suspense is killing me. Yeah. So, this is a rare card from M20. It's called Agent of Treachery. Mm -hmm. It costs five and two blue, so seven converter mana cost for a human rogue that's a 2-3. Mm -hmm. Now, you might be wondering to yourself, why would a 2-3 cost seven? Uh, well, as it happens, when it enters the battlefield, gain control of target permanent. Now, 
Control magic is great, but not for seven mana. That's a little bit much. However, there's another line. At the beginning of your end step, if you control three or more permanents you don't own, draw three cards. That yep. is an ancestral recall. Ancestral recall, just for controlling three little old permanents that could be of any type. That uh, is and, pretty bananas. Yeah, it really is. It's, uh, it's, it's. Uh, I expected you to say bonkers. I'm trying to break that habit. <laughs> <laughs> I've been um, told that too many things are stupid or bonkers. What? I Who mean, told if, you they, that? if they weren't stupid or bonkers, I wouldn't say that. This is um, kind of bananas, though. Yeah, this is kind of bananas. This uh, this is really good if it stays alive. And uh, two three is a respectable body, but not not great. If it stays alive, you are going to be ancestral recalling every turn. It's it's ridiculous. And um, because it says at the beginning of your end step, that means the turn it comes into play, it can get you that three cards too. Yep. So if you're already running some sort of evil degenerate control shell. What, 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 is, what is the phrase we worked out? Like, want to ancestral recall until they kill this card? <laughs> Play Galena. Thada Adele. Memnark. Yasova. Beckett Brass. Even the weird Kega deck that relies on recursion. <laughs> Make copies. Your clones, Mimic Vats, Hell of the Host, Riku. Or bounce it with Brago, friend of the show Deadeye Navigator, Crystal Shard, or even Conjurer's Closet. Gain more control. Blatant thievery, expropriate, acquisition, mind dilation, all the treacheries, sower of temptations, aura thieves, and even you could possibly get lucky with a tolly. For the low, low cost of seven mana, we'll <laughs> let you ancestral recall with everybody else's cards in play. Now, there are already some really, really disgusting, disgusting ways to do this. We named a bunch. Yeah, and <laughs> you can even um, Shrionic Resonator yep. will let you copy that effect and draw six cards. Can and Harmonicon. Oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah, this is gross. This card is pretty gross. Yeah, um, Pen Harmonicon gets you two permanents right away. Oh. Yeah. Oh, that's A single dumb. blatant thievery probably gets you all the way there. Um, that's <laughs> expropriate. How many people do you want? Oh, do you want me to take extra turns or take your stuff? You choose. I'm happy to draw cards. <laughs> and if you have something like, you know, Alhamra's Archive or one of the cards, like the card that lets you, when you draw, they mill. So you can get a second condition out of there. Yeah, like Notion, not Notion Thief. Not, um, uh, it was like one of those enchantments from yeah. uh, Origins. But the point, though, is that there's just a ton of great ways to do this. There's all these exchange effects like Gilded Drake or like steel effects like Sea Singer, Mind Dilation, uh, Hostage Taker even, Thief of yeah. Sanity, yeah. Uh, that hybrid black and blue wraith from uh, Theros. Oh, no, from Ravnica. From Ravnica, yeah. Return of Ravnica that let you just steal these things. I don't know. Like I think something. this card in EDH, if you can protect it, can get really just out of control. Yeah. Yeah, you basically uh, strap some boots on this thing and you make sure that it's not targetable and uh, just wait for the next board wipe. And if they have to use a board wipe in order to keep you from drawing three cards, which isn't terrible, right? Then uh, you're still doing it. You're still doing pretty well. Uh, yeah. Odds are they're they're playing that board wipe on their turn and so you've at least drawn three cards. Like Beckett Brass is dirty and with this out, oh my goodness, it's wonderful. <laughs> It's not a pirate, but, you know, there are ways around that. Isn't there enchantments that'll let you make all of your creatures any creature type? Oh, my. And they're in so blue, this, too. This could be a pirate. Yar. <laughs> I mean, it's already a rogue. It's halfway there. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Um, this card just seems really, really silly and really fun. That seven mana casting cost is pretty high, but I think that there are ways around that. And... Um, if you're playing well, Thought of Adele, you already stole their soul ring, so you can go ahead and ramp this guy out anyways. Yeah. Yeah, we know that there are ways around it. Oh, Absolutely. Yeah. And yeah. remember, folks, this is target permanent. This isn't target creature. A lot There's a lot of ways to grab creatures, and because this happens until the end of the turn, you can actually stack the end of the turn uh, uh, triggered abilities. So if you, uh, for example, if you steal something until the end of the turn... 
uh, uh, and you have this card out, you just stack this so that it goes off and it checks to see if you're controlling three permanents you don't own. And then you give those permanents back. Thanks for the loan, everybody. I'll see you next turn. It's pretty good. Active treason, um, man. It'd be great. Yeah, active treason. Um, and uh, so a lot of these uh, thieving abilities are, uh, are based in red as well. So, you know, this goes into a red-blue deck pretty easily. Um, we named a bunch of blue commanders that it goes into. Uh, and and but the, just the idea that it's target permanent. We're already stealing each other's planeswalkers now, and we've been stealing each other's creatures and artifacts since well, creatures since the dawn of time, mm -hmm. and artifacts for a long time now. Uh, and lands. This comes in and steals a land. So if your opponent has a homeward path, you oh, just steal that's it. That's gross. It's really gross. I was about uh, to say, I'm like, make sure you wasteland their homeward path first. But um, well, yeah. You destroy or you it. Just take it. <laughs> yeah, and uh, and that works pretty well because they can't homeward path their own homeward path, or there's no way to get lands back. This is a permanent change of control too. Uh, there's not like the, it doesn't say until end of turn. It just says when it comes into play, gain control of target permanent. Ta-da! And there's so many cards that let you like conjure currency, for instance. That oh, let yeah. you uh, trade control of two uh, cards of the, you know, same uh, type, and I don't know. You can just do some really really silly things with this. Give them a mirror token, and take their creature, <laughs> and then just be like, "Now this is my nickel bolus." Yeah. And yeah. Um, I don't know. This seems really really fun. It's like a very Johnny card. It feels, it feels like a a deck that I would want to build around this card. Yeah. Which is unique. It's like. It's weird to get a card that's not a legend that you want to build around, but I would totally want to build a deck around this guy. It seemed really yeah. fun. Let's not forget either confusion in the ranks. You want yeah. to do that after uh, you cast this one, though, because you don't want to give this card away. But if you're casting, lo if you're putting lots of tokens into play and you have an opportunity to steal other things that other people control, just go for it. It's great. Yeah, I'm looking forward to playing this confusion card. How about you? Ranks. Wow. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, for yeah. those at home, uh, whenever an artifact creature or enchantment comes to play, its controller chooses target permanent that another player controls that shares a type with it, exchange control of those permanents. That's yucky. It's dirty. <laughs> That's it's fun. dirty. I've seen uh, it played in goblin decks where they're generating a lot of goblin tokens. So yeah, they give you a goblin token and they take your dragon. <laughs> this definitely feels like a stop hitting yourself card. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Well... It's uh, it's pretty good. Listeners and viewers, tell us what you think about this. Um, we were going to stream this episode uh, until we got the preview card and then realized we can't stream it. So, Agent of Treachery. This card Agent of is going to be real, real fun. Yeah. And I look forward to seeing what decks you guys come up with that uh, make use of this very clever little card. That's right. And uh, once again, as you said earlier, and as people heard with our, our little preview intro... Thank you for the pre, pre <laughs> Thank you for the free preview card, Wizards of the Coast. Um, we did not have to pay for this at all, listeners and viewers. Not one penny did we pay for this. Not even conjured currency. <laughs> Hey there, Commander and listeners. This is your favorite Gavin Verhe here, senior game designer and product architect over at Wizards of the Coast. Now, what that means is I'm one of the people behind making magic. I come up with what a lot of these cards do and how our products look. And this card, the preview card today, Agent of Treachery, has kind of a fun little story. So in uh, Multiverse, or Drake, the tool that we use to look through all of our magic sets, we have, of course, set after set, and you can see you know, what's inside each of them. But we also have a special folder called DA1. It stands for Design Archive 1. And if we're working on a set and we, we really like a card or 
I'm just working in my spare time and there's a card I like, I kick it into DA1. Because it's not for this set, it's not for what's going on right now, but at some point, it might be cool uh, to use. And then I'll go look through it sometimes when I'm working on sets or products to pull cards out of there. And I was originally made by Yanni Skolnick, because he had this idea of, oh, hey, we should have this design archive for cards. And not everyone, admittedly, in um, R&D uses it. Some people use it more than others. But Yanni, being the person who created the design archive, um, he is very prone to using it, given that he knows it knows it pretty well. And so he was the lead designer for Corset 2020. So when he was trying to fill a hole, a blue rare hole, he looked through it, and he found this card. It was a single blue mana for one one creature, and it was a thief. It was like a master thief. And the idea was, uh, what it said is, uh, as long as you control a permanent that you don't own, it gets plus three, plus three, has hexproof, and can't be blocked. Which is a really fun idea. What about a blue creature that was better if you controlled more permanents? So it started off as that, but then they pretty quickly found that that was just, you know, kind of a busted aggressive card. You would, you know, play it, and then you would start switching things really fast, and it wasn't very fun to lose this, like, 4-4 four, four and blockable hexproof card, you know? Um, and so they started looking at other ways to approach it, and they tried out this new take on it. Well, hey, what if instead of being an aggressive creature, which eh, probably wouldn't be that fun and standard anyway, what if it was actually more of a shot at commander? And so they came up with this version, which is a big, it's a lot more expensive, steals your opponent's stuff forever, so it's not just as long as this thing is in play, so you always have it, and then it create, kind of puts you on this quest. How many things can you take, and are there fun ways to switch control of other players' permanents? Because that bonus of drawing three cards is really, really awesome. And so it was kind of a fun little path to how we got here with this card, from this tiny little 1-1 one, one, all the way up to the seven mana uh, creature. And of course, the name in the final processes was selected in part because it throws back to Treachery, which is a card that steals an opponent's, uh, opponent's creature. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this preview card, Agent of Treachery, and that you're enjoying the Magic 2020 core set previews. This set was a blast to work on. We've been coming out with a lot of really cool stuff lately and kind of this just little wonderful refresher of, oh, right, this is what core magic feels like, not planeswalkers everywhere, wild, crazy mechanic palooza times. Um, it's a nice breather. The draft format's fun. There's some really cool new cards in there, some great old reprints, and it should hopefully be enough to get people excited for, for the, uh, the summer months. So go out, check out the pre-release, have a great time, and enjoy Core Set 2020 previews. And thank you, you as always, the commander, in for uh, asking me about these cards. Thanks so much.